Starting off this list is a multitude of banned subreddits from everyone's favorite cesspool, Reddit. In 2015, the company introduced a concept known as quarantining, where certain visibilities of controversial subreddits would be restricted. For example, a warning prompt will be shown when entering one, and money cannot be made off them. But sometimes these get flat out removed, and usually it's for a good reason. I'm all for free speech, but some of these subreddits' names are just horrendous. Probably the most blatant one is r slash beating women, which explains itself. But part of the reason why it was taken down was because moderators were sharing the personal information of users. Then there was r slash jailbait, where users would post sexually suggestive images of underage girls. This was initially allowed, weirdly enough, since no actual nudity was shown, but users would send them to each other via private messaging, which is disgusting. After some outside attention from news outlets, it was finally banned. I'll list a few others that are more funny than revolting. There's r slash shoplifting, r slash watch people die, r slash fat people hate, r slash guns for sale, and r slash dark net markets. There's a bunch of other popular cases, but maybe that could be a separate video. MakeMeKing.com this is a now defunct video sharing site, sort of like YouTube, but this one had forms and a specific set of videos posted. Users could dare each other to do things, which the opposing user could respond to with a video of them doing the dare, and then the cycle would continue. And some of these dares could be officially posted to the main site for all to see. Now, this is the entry I can barely find any information on online. All we know is that it wasn't popular enough to stick around, and the domain expired. The only way to experience this site are random YouTube videos of the dares that the users posted, and a Reddit interview that didn't get enough attention. There was a page that was found of seemingly the owner trying to sell off the site for $20,000 in 2006. The number of visitors though reported is seemingly low. They think Make Me King has potential, which it could have, but it was never fully realized. DoctorWhoWit.com This is a massive multiplayer online role-playing game involving the BBC franchise Doctor Who. You'd be able to create your own character based off of one of many species in the show, and complete single-player challenges. You would battle foes and complete puzzles, with a few challenges being multiplayer. There was also a main hub where users could interact with each other, along with a market and game currency, because why not? The game was available for a few years, specifically 2012-2014, but it's no longer up because it was bought out by another party, a shady company known for Robux scams. Huh, what class. A year later, the site was archived on the Internet Wayback Machine, but the game itself is still lost. Meaning you can still visit the page layouts, but not much else. The only way for it to be found is if somebody saved the game's files before the removal in 2014. KaraokeParty.com This was a site originating from the 2000s with one obvious purpose, karaoke. It allowed users to record themselves singing a song and then uploading it for all to see. What made it interesting is that it also had a mode where you could battle your friends or random strangers. This worked by singing to a specific song and seeing who had the highest score. The database of songs apparently had quite a lot going for it, with new ones being added all the time. Karaoke Party was up for quite a long time too, up until 2015 when it started becoming inaccessible. Certain countries like the UK, Australia, France, and even the United States weren't able to view it for some reason. And it soon became this way permanently, all over the world a year later, until its official takedown in 2016. All that was shown was the URL in the top left corner. Lost Media Wiki user Shackaduck went digging and found an archive of the site, which they posted to the Internet Wayback Machine. This revealed the three creators of the site, which were all emailed. They didn't respond. But a LinkedIn profile from one of them was found. His name is Marcus Hornsten. And the page states he was the co-founder of Karaoke Party from 2008 to the site's deletion. Nothing else though has come up, and no other pages relating to it have been found. MiniEgo.com This is another MMORPG which has a big license tied to it, 
but before that happened, it started off as a beta demo that wasn't fully usable yet. From 2004 to 2007, Mini Ego was still in production. In development by Studio Cam, the project was helmed by Mauricio Ruiz along with some volunteers. All I can tell about the gameplay is that you can customize a character and play mini games or something. In December 2008, the site announced its partnership with Paws Inc. That means many of the Garfield characters would be added to the game, along with new custom props, clothes, paper crafts, and other stuff relating to the franchise. This seemed so big that the official Garfield website even featured the game's trailer to get more players. The site was around up until the end of the decade, where it now sits as a domain for sale. Guess that lasagna-loving cat couldn't save this crappy-looking game. ThreeDGrooveGames.com. This was the official website for the game engine 3D Groove, which was developed by the company The Groove Alliance. Beginning in 1998, it specialized in browser games with original titles. But due to popularity and license agreements, many of the future games were made to advertise brands and TV shows. The site was up for quite a long time until 2009, but the Groove Alliance company did rebrand as many issues were cited with the brand. Former employee Jules Erbach would go on to express how skewy everything was and that she got ripped off by the CEO. Over the years, many have made efforts to archive these lost games, but some are still missing and only have screenshots. Here are some that still need to be found. Mountain Dew Skateboarding, FedEx USA Express, Semis Chips on Tour, Toonami Trapped in Hyperspace, Jimmy Neutron Got a Blast, Rocket Race, and Star Trek Online. Most of the TV-inspired games, though, are actually found, with titles based on Dora the Explorer, Blue's Clues, Kim Possible, The Powerpuff Girls, and Rocket Power. Magabond.com Now make no mistake, this website is still technically up, but I included it here as the removal of Adobe Flash Player pretty much messed the whole thing up. A common mistake many make is that this website is owned by Magabond herself. She's a classic YouTuber known for staring at the camera with these big creepy eyes. Pretty much just what Benjamin Bennett does except for simps. She actually hasn't been active on the platform since 2014, at least on YouTube. So the website named after her is apparently one of these simps named Frank. It's super weird and cryptic and has seemingly changed format a multitude of times. It houses a few videos where Frank expresses his feelings towards Magabon. His face is not shown, just a gas mask he wears even in the drawing he makes of the two of them. Japanese text is shown, showing he really doesn't know her well enough. Maggie is not actually Japanese, doesn't even speak the language very well. Pretty much she's a weeb. Frank is clearly shown as a soccer who makes strange expressions of love and ARG-like visuals. And this did end up being sort of an ARG. The owner of the site is not actually named Frank, but instead, Joaquim De Young. He made it as a social experiment to see how many people would visit Magabond.com, despite it not being her official URL. We know all this as he fessed up years later on various sites. The site itself is pretty much a husk though, nothing worthwhile now, but I still included it on the list as a more interesting case of a website ruined by Adobe's removal. ComeOnFwank.com this was a nostalgia-based website many seem to think appeared in the early 2000s. It focused on 80s and 90s products like video games, TV shows, and toys. It also had a YouTube channel, which has since had all of its videos disappear. The site was up until 2014 when the domain of course expired, but instead of renewing it, the site's owner Josh Yon just gave it up. The full reason was entirely unknown until a website contributor named Chase Irwin explained that Josh wanted to focus on his other career and didn't have time anymore for Come On Fwank. The domain ended up getting purchased by someone actually named Fwank, who used it as a blog. And then the domain expired three years later. So even with the deletion of Come On Fwank, someone uploaded it all to the archive.org for safekeeping. But interestingly enough, someone else deleted it. It's pretty much been blacklisted from there, with Josh as the implied culprit. Maybe he just didn't want anyone to view the site in any form. Ironic, because the motto of the site was, It's good to live in the past. Only a few screenshots are around, 
one being a personal tribute to the old Nickelodeon studios. Orca.com Before Instagram, Twitter, and even a month before Facebook was a social media website, it was launched in January 2004 and became pretty popular, specifically in countries like Brazil and India. It was owned and operated by Google, who touted it as a big platform of massive reach. Due to its censored popularity and legal issues, Google moved its management to Google Brazil in 2008. This wouldn't help Orkut's eventual downfall, as it shut down in fall 2014. A few months prior, no new accounts could be created, and until two years later you were able to export all your posts. The public content was archived by Google who have held onto it, and in April 2022, the site came back up with this long message. I won't be reading it all here due to the length, but it has a bunch of preachy stuff about being kind to one another online. Huh, <laughs> fuck that. Hotel626.com A website which hosted a really unique horror game like no other, it actually started in 2008 as a marketing stunt done by Doritos who, of all brands, wanted a horror game. Anyways, it did quite well and was praised for its horror aspects and atmosphere. And for an added bonus, it was only playable between 6pm and 6am, which is why it's called Hotel 626. It was even played by many YouTubers, including Felix himself. What? <laughs> Oh my god! What the fuck? So, of course a sequel was made, called Asylum 626. Many weren't a fan of it, mainly due to the more intense marketing. To access it, you needed to buy a bag of Doritos, and insert a code featured on it. By 2014, Doritos gave up the domain and the project fell into obscurity. And that sucks, because Hotel 626 seemed like such an interesting game. All of the comments I've read about it praise it for many aspects. I mean, it does sound fun. Pretty much you wake up at a hotel at 2 in the morning and have to escape from the creepy dwellers of it. Zootycoon.com This is a last minute addition to the list as I completely forgot about the site's existence. It had links directed to buying the games, along with other downloadable content made for them, and Flash games were available two of which I can recall. The first was a photo safari game where you would take photos of animals to gain points. The other coincided with the extinct animal pack where you would chip away rocks and stones to find fossils. I was able to find a few screenshots. The website seemingly changed in 2013 with the release of the Xbox game which was a total disaster, so much so that it killed the franchise until Planet Zoo came out. However, in February 2014, a ZT2 roundtable user named Aubrey Kitsune was able to archive the site, but these flash games and many other features playable are still lost. By the way, I gotta love how the only gift that works is a strap from the first game. How dumb. StickDeath.com Created by a man named Robert Lewis in the mid-1990s, this was one of the first animation websites ever. The animations revolved around stick figures doing whatever you wanted. And since this is the internet, many of these projects contained violence, nudity, and mature humor. But besides that, it also featured games with some of the funniest titles ever. Stuff like SWAT, Sticks with Ass Kicking Tactics, and Crack House Cleanup. The typical things you would expect from the early millennium internet. But the domain expiring motivated Rob to give up on it. But the thing is, we don't know what specific year it did. Sources point somewhere between 2007 to 2009. Then it was brought back in 2013, renamed to Stick Death Reborn. That only stuck around for a couple of years before that too was removed in 2016. Not much content from the game was archived up until late 2020, when Lost Media Wiki user Team Jeruno was able to dig some of it up. This included various animations, games, and content in between, but much more is waiting to be discovered. LiveLeak.com Being one of the internet's premier shock sites, it was launched in 2006. 
It was known as a more edgy version of YouTube, with the site's admins not afraid to show violence, gore, criminal activity, and other not safe for work material. Owner Hayward Hewitt constantly had to defend the site's existence, especially when controversy arose in the UK, as some videos would show children fighting. Another controversy occurred in 2014 when the beheading of US journalist James Foley by ISIS was shown on LiveLeak. This led to Hewitt announcing no other ISIS related videos to be shown on the platform. A similar thing would occur in 2019, when the Christchurch shooting footage was leaked there. To some users, it felt like the site's main ideals were being chipped away, as now certain types of videos are being removed. Horrible videos, but that was the whole purpose of the site to many. In 2020, LiveLeak began to draw back and temporarily disable the ability to log in. This was fixed, but those who did not log in could only see videos suggested from other platforms like Dailymotion and YouTube. And then on May 5th, 2021, LiveLeak was closed for good. Now every time you enter it in the URL, it redirects you to another site called itemfix.com. It's pretty much a neutered version of the OG site, with some more humorous videos. Answers.yahoo.com Undoubtedly the most well-known website on this list, this was notorious for their sheer stupidity at play. It was a question and answer site where users could ask anything, even stupid questions that made you question that person's intelligence. But what was better were the equally idiotic answers. Like some of these just made you question humanity, but people loved it. And the service stuck around from its introduction into the 2020s, but it grew less popular over time, which motivated the owners of Yahoo to eventually shut it down. This was due to the company being bought out by Apollo Global Management. So on April 5th, 2021, Yahoo Answers had its shutdown day announced, May 4th. But before that, you were still able to post questions and answers up until April 20th. After that, you were only able to view them and not make your own. But during that time, a group known as the Archive Team decided to save as much as possible from the site, collecting over 4.75 terabytes of content. After the shutdown, the site redirected you to the Yahoo Help page until July where that changed to redirect you to the main Yahoo page. Despite all of this, the Japanese version of Yahoo Answers is actually still available. ChaseStJohn.net Created by Eric Fournier sometime in 2001, this is the official site made for his character Shay St. John. You will no doubt recognize her from various creepy YouTube videos from the early days of the site and much of that energy shines on this equally creepy website. The homepage alone is unsettling with all these uncanny gifts and Shay's introductory voiceover. Hi, this is Shay St. John. Welcome to my webpage. Please feel free to explore all the treats I have for you. And remember, drop me a line and tell me what you think. Thanks for coming by. Bye. It features various pages including a store, shopping info for the Triggers compilation, a guest book, a live journal, and even the ability to write to Shay. Clicking on any of these or one of the pictures leads you to an almost maze-like setup with more pages after the other, and they get creepier the further you dive in. The site remained up for many years, up until the mid-2010s. Sometime between late 2017 and early 2018, the domain expired. Many thought this was removed more of maliciously, as the YouTube channel was removed due to community guideline strikes around the same time. But really it was because nobody was able to renew the domain, as Eric Fournier had passed away in 2010. You can find much of the site on the Internet Wayback Machine, but it isn't the same. Poppy.Church This was an ARG revolving around the music sensation Poppy, who started her career by making these weird, unsettling YouTube videos. And that style carried itself onto this website, which launched in May 2017. All you were able to do was leave your name and phone number to which this number 831-777-6779 would text this. Please click this link to confirm your poppy.church reservation. Also, calling this number would have a pre-recorded message from Poppy herself. This changed monthly. Soon enough, the website would change showing a black pyramid rotating in the center of the screen. There was also a door icon which you could click to access your account via email. After the 620 update, you were able to log in and access new features, like the lobby, the gallery, and the theater. 
Rooms would be distributed to the users on August 23rd, 2018. It turned into this virtual world with various things to do, and of course, an in-game currency. Poppy herself would even come on to chat with users. A bit of controversy did arise due to certain words being censored, mainly relating to the lawsuit going on at the time involving Titanic Sinclair. Stuff like Mars Argo, Cory Mixter, allegations, etc. This didn't last for too long though. The site stayed up until December 10th, 2019. The reason cited was the staff's management. When logging onto the site now, it has this long message. Pretty much just thanking the players and saying refunds are available. Yet the bottom of the screen shows, quote, To begin your final ascension, enter your email address below. Then they give you the option to do that. So maybe the Church of Poppy will be reborn one day.